I'm John Lovato Jr., and I'm part of a community of passionate firefighters who take ownership. We don't sit around waiting for experience, and we don't rely on our department for professional development. You see, we understand that the more we invest in ourselves, the better off our career and our lives are going to be. Because we are influencing people as opposed to forcing them, people who have never been taught the benefits of being into the job, we have to do things differently. We know what works because it's been modeled by great firefighters before us. It's just not understood by all, so we have to put ourselves out there to be judged. Put yourself out there. Ignore the naysayers. They tell you you're doing the impossible, yet it works. Being in the job is actually what builds morale and performance. We are culture changers. We are bringing back the senior man culture. We are Brotherhood Coaching. Hello, Brotherhood Coaching. How are you guys doing today? Uh, today's episode is going to be about experiences and how they drive our choices that we make. So our profession is basically made up of um, on-the-job experiences that we have. You know, we do some learning beforehand in the fire academy, but then when we get in the firehouse, it's all about um, getting that on-the-job training. And that's what a lot of our ancestors did before us. Come on, it was all on the job. You know, uh, I had a friend back when I was um, just out of high school, and her dad was a Chicago fireman, and uh, me and him used to talk, you know, and I, I worked in the suburbs, and, and he would tell me stories about going to fires in the 70s in the city, and um, stuff that would happen, uh, and, you know, uniforms with blue jeans and whatever t-shirt they wanted, and just going to fire to fire, and a lot of their learning was just on the job, because it was based off the experiences. So the choices they made were based off the experiences that they had. So fast forward to present day, you know, I don't know what kind of action your firehouse gets, um, you know, mine were pretty busy, but guess what? I got a higher likelihood tomorrow of running multiple lift assists than I do catching a fire. Um, you know, that's the demographics of my area. You know, I've got some buddies that, you know, there's a good chance that they're going to catch a fire tomorrow when they get on shift. And so what do we do? Um, how do you kind of overcome these experiences? Well, a lot of people out there start attending conferences and trainings and you start having these experiences at it and you understand, oh, okay, this is why you're holding the holes like this or, or this is why, you know, you assign this tool to this guy and you, you know, you start picking things up. Maybe you go to a forceful entry training, whatever it is, but all these experiences you have, whether they're on the job, riding the rig, going to the call and figuring it out from a senior guy or figuring out the hard way and learning a lesson about maybe staying low. Um, you know, there was a time, went in, I was standing up with a nozzle, ended up rolling over us out of a, a um, doorway, ended up lighting my helmet up and burned my ear, and uh, the, my backup guy started hitting me in the head, and I thought he was mad because I actually ended up taking the nozzle from him. Meanwhile, I had no idea that my helmet had lit up. Uh, my One of my uh, battalion chiefs at the time said, if, if, if you're gonna be dumb, you better be tough. And he was right. So that was based on that experience I had. I didn't have any issues. Once that happened, guess what? I stay low now. But the whole point is, you're going to come across these experiences, and that's probably what drives your choices that you make today. So how do we start sharing our experiences, though? Because maybe there's something you know, and you learned it from someone, or you experienced it, and you want to get that buy-in from someone else to show them, hey, this is the way we got to do it. And But they're not having that. They didn't have that same experience that you did. So you know, there's a saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And you're absolutely correct. You can, you can bring people, you can show them the path, but you can't make them drink. But you know what you can do? You can make them thirsty on the walk there, so they're more likely to drink. So what am I talking about making them thirsty on the way there so they drink? Well, there's certain things you can do. It's, it's almost kind of like sales. You know, I work with a guy, he's, he's a good salesman. Uh, he spent probably 20 years doing it. And um, there's a way to go about it, right? So we try to make them thirsty there. And I'm going to give a couple examples of some stories. I don't know if you guys know, but it was a, a few years ago maybe, uh, Fairfax County did a study on radio straps. And, you know, um, I personally, where I came from, uh, everyone had a radio strap. So guess what? I had a radio strap. That was the culture of where I was. When I came down to Florida, I was the only person in my department with it. And fast forward to present day, the, I would say almost the majority of our department uses them now. At that time, it wasn't because people didn't um, have the experience with them. But they did this study, and they talked about um, how it's you know it's safer and the proper way to wear it and all the advantages of actually using a radio belt. And then they actually took all their membership and put them through a drill. And this drill gave them the aha moment or the experience of seeing, wow, wearing the radio strap and especially wearing it like this um, makes me safer 
And when I'm safer, guess what? High probability going home the next day just by using um, a little tool, you know, using the radio strap the way it's designed for instead of putting in that pocket. So, you know, the department didn't just put out a blanket uh, policy on saying you're going to do this. What they did is they created the experience for people to have so they understood it. And that's kind of what this is going to be about it is, you know, if you want people to buy into something like you learned it, maybe you went to a conference or maybe you experienced it on a call, you know, a simple email does not paint the picture. You have to give the experience to people. You have to convince them um, that, that they're going to want to do it. And I'm going to give you another short story. I was, I was actually talking to my wife the other day. And um, she likes to, you know, when she's cooking, she uses high heat with the pans. And she kept putting cold water on it so it didn't stick or anything like that. And I, I said, hey, honey, I said, um, you know, you really shouldn't do that because of the fluctuation of the temperature is going to mess up our pans. And she goes, oh, okay. Well, a week later, I saw her do it again, and then she actually did it on this. Uh, we have glass top stove. Did on glass top stove, same thing. And I said, hey, do me a favor. Would you look it up? about it just so you know i'm not being crazy here and it's just not my opinion on it it's actually can do something well she ended up taking her phone out she looked it up and she went oh someone else basically said the same thing i was saying but because it was someone else she had the experience now understood it no longer does it and that's kind of got got me thinking about putting this video out was that you have to give people experience and as we all know you know uh, most husbands don't look at their wives and most wives don't listen to their husbands so it always to be a third party to um, get that uh, share that thought to where they're actually going to buy into it. So this stranger basically said the same thing I did, and it was taken in as opposed to just uh, the husband saying it. Same thing's going to happen on the job with you guys. Maybe you're trying to sell it to a chief or you're selling it to a peer, whatever it is. Um, you got to give people that experience part with it. Um, you can go logical with it and explain all the facts because I don't know how many emails that I've seen where you know everything is relayed and um, you know it's just not producing that experience or that aha moment. Um, good, a quick quote here is from this uh, marketing book I was reading, and I really want to share it with you guys. And what they talk about is you have to convince people emotionally first before they get excited about your logic. So you might be able to come out with whatever, you know, hose load, uh, new tool, old tool, modifying a tool, uh, new style rig, whatever it may be. They're not going to have that buy-in for it until they're convinced emotionally first. And then you can tie in the logic afterwards. So what happens with the emotional part is getting that aha moment that I talk about in uh, the Fix Your Firehouse book or having the experience of it where you're like, wow, you know what, you're right. There's a reason we do it this way. And um, you know, I haven't perfected it yet, but that's how I try to sell my expectations um, in my firehouse to, to let guys know. It's not just saying, hey, you're going to... Every fire alarm, you're going to have this. There's a reason behind it, and I try to share that with them, and a lot of times they'll understand it. Because not, not everyone's had a fire alarm end up being a structure fire. I have. I've had a few of them that were. Until you have the experience, you're probably not going to see the importance of it. So some of the things I might share as a, you know, I put on line of duty death reports, and I share where other guys went to the firehouse just like us, and they went to work expecting to come home the next day, got complacent someplace, and um, didn't really work out. So experiences they shape our choices that we're going to have so if you want to get that um people to kind of buy into that change emotionally um give them that experience give them that aha moment it's going to help out a lot so i hope you guys got a lot out about this episode if you did please do me a favor and share it on up with somebody else um the more we share messages like this the better off we're helping everyone out so otherwise i will see you guys next week and i'll talk to you then